Resident Evil, the classic survival horror franchise, turns 25 this year. And while the series has certainly had its ups and downs in the past, with the upcoming Resident Evil Village, Resident Evil 4 VR, a rebooted live-action Resident Evil movie adaptation, and a Resident Evil Netflix show and movie, Resident Evil is clearly having a moment. But when you've been around that long, you've probably accumulated your share of strange development stories, weird anecdotes, and hidden Easter eggs, and that's certainly true of Capcom's beloved horror franchise. So here are seven things you probably didn't know about the Resident Evil games. Resident, Resident Evil. Evil. And then they say the number of the game. Or they say like Code Veronica. It's weird. The original Resident Evil is a low-poly survival horror masterpiece that demonstrated how video games could uniquely bring the horror genre to life. Cinematic cutscenes, campy voice acting, dynamic camera angles, and terrifying jump scares all come together to tell the story of a sprawling, dimly lit mansion brimming with undead monsters. Resident Evil utilized nearly all of the capabilities of the then immensely powerful PlayStation, which makes it all the more strange that Resident Evil was originally planned to be a Super Famicom game. You see, Capcom had previously made a Famicom game called Sweet Home, a survival survival horror experience where players take on the roles of multiple characters as they explore a creepy mansion, collect notes, micromanage a constrained inventory, and use rudimentary items like keys, lighters, and lockpicks. Sound familiar? Well, it turns out Sweet Home's director, Koji Oda, told Game Informer in 2017 that Resident Evil originally began development for the Super Famicom as a sort of spiritual successor to Sweet Home. Sweet Home was based on a movie that Capcom no longer had the rights to, so the company decided to create its own horror game series. Nintendo's market-leading position in the early 1990s meant developing for its horror hardware was the smart financial bet to make, so a Capcom horror game for the Super Famicom was the way to go, despite its limited power. But the infamous falling out between Nintendo and Sony, famed for their efforts to create a joint console together, led to Sony striking out on its own with the PlayStation, which launched in 1994. Capcom realized the far more capable hardware would allow developers to tell more immersive, expansive stories, and development of Resident Evil moved to PlayStation and started its rise to prominence. Now, we don't know what a Super Nintendo Resident Evil game would have looked like, but the system did get its share of atmospheric horror games like Super Ghouls and Ghosts, Zombies Ate My Neighbors, and Clock Tower, so it's very possible that Resident Evil could have maybe looked similar to one of them. That said, if you're now wondering what the Resident Evil series would have looked like as a chunky pixel art horror game, well, do we have a story for you. Stick around for that one, if you want. But you should. It'll be fun. <laughs> In 2019, Capcom completely remade and reimagined the 1998 classic Resident Evil 2 for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC, and the results were widely regarded to be one of the best video game remakes of all time. Capcom has a great record of remaking fan-favorite Resident Evil games, including they beautifully remade original Resident Evil for the Nintendo GameCube, but they've also been responsible for a few Resident Evil demakes that were much much less successful. You see, the late 90s was a crowded era for video game handhelds, with Nintendo, Sega, SNK, and Bandai all selling portable gaming systems. In 1997, American toy company Tiger Electronics, mostly known for making shoddy LCD games and also Furbies, do, 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 do. <gasps> all new Furbies, decided to throw down with its own dedicated handheld called the Tiger Gamecom, a clunky black and white oddity that nobody bought. Well, maybe one guy bought, and he'll definitely leave a comment on this video. Hey. It's good to see you. Thanks for just hanging out. Anyway, Capcom saw tremendous success with Resident Evil 2 and decided to port it to the Gamecom to incredibly weird results. The fully 3D rendered third person survival horror game was now a flat colorless 16 bit 2D game that scrapped pretty much everything that made the original memorable, including the entirety of Claire's campaign. By the year 2000, the failed Tiger Gamecom had been discontinued entirely, making the Resident Evil 2 pixel art demake a weird but also kind of peculiar footnote in Resident Evil history. Hey, at least it actually reached store shelves, which is more than we can say for the canceled Game Boy Color port of the original Resident Evil. Seriously, look at this thing. They almost made Resident Evil for the Game Boy Color, like with fixed camera angles and everything. I love it. When Resident Evil 3 Nemesis launched in 1999, the story picked up right where its predecessor Resident Evil 2 left off in the streets of Raccoon City, introducing some new mechanics and a menacing new monster named the Nemesis T-Type. However, the original plan for the third Resident Evil game was a much different experience. After the wild success of Resident Evil 2, Capcom explored lots of different directions for sequels and spin-offs, with legendary game designer Hideki Kamiya taking the lead on a version of Resident Evil 3 that centered around Honk, the Umbrella Special Forces agent from Resident Evil 2, attempting to transport a G-Vi 
virus sample on a cruise ship across the ocean. This version was ultimately scrapped for the street level version of Resident Evil 3 that fans know today, most recently from the remake the game received in 2020. The cruise ship setting did make its way into a Resident Evil game eventually when the Game Boy Color exclusive Resident Evil Gaiden, meaning spin-off in Japanese, launched two years later in 2001. Gaiden takes place entirely on a dilapidated passenger ship overrun with zombies and pits series staples Leon S. Kennedy and Barry Burton against hordes of the undead in a top-down 8-bit action-adventure game that switches to first-person shooting for combat. A cruise ship was also the setting for 2012's Resident Evil Revelations, and then another gigantic cruise ship returned to Resident Evil along with a first-person shooting again in the second half of the 2017 hit Resident Evil 7. So basically, Resident Evil went from having almost no huge boats to just having tons of huge boats, just constantly, just huge boats all the time. There's even one in Resident Evil 5, just nonstop huge boats. <laughs> Obsessive Resident Evil 4 players know that beating the game on the hardest difficulty unlocks unique exclusive weapons like the Plaga Removal Laser, which can basically one-hit any enemy in the game. But on the opposite end of the difficulty spectrum, the original version of Resident Evil 4 also contains a much easier amateur mode, that is, if you bought the game in Japan. The Japanese version of RE4, known as Biohazard 4, has an exclusive super easy amateur mode where every weapon has double the ammo capacity and Leon takes much, much less damage when being attacked by the wide array of horrible enemies in this game. Amateur mode, like the easy mode that did appear in other territories, allows players to skip entire sections of the game, like the hedge maze full of grotesque tentacle wolves in Chapter 3-2, making it a unique option for the Resident Evil 4 speedrunning community, which has used the mode to beat the entire game faster than in any other mode. This has led to the current Resident Evil 4 speedrun world record of 1 hour, 13 minutes, and 48 seconds, which ironically is harder to accomplish than any hard mode that any Resident Evil game has ever shipped with. Like many Resident Evil games, Resident Evil 4 has been ported to nearly every video game system ever made. Don't ask me how many ports of Resident Evil 4 I've purchased personally, because the answer is all of them. So new players and old players alike have had easy access to this fantastic and infinitely replayable game on tons of platforms since it first launched in 2005. However, in 2017, 12 years after the game initially launched, a YouTuber named Slippy Slides, who's best known for his videos where he drags the camera around secret and unseen areas of hit video games, found a still hidden Easter egg in Resident Evil the Evil 4. You see, in the back half of the game, a helicopter attempts to reach Leon, but it crashes after being shot down by a rocket. Leon is then left to proceed on his own again, but instead of rushing to the next conflict, Slippy Slides looked off into the distance to find a silhouette lurking inside a building the player cannot reach. Breaking the game and flying the camera there reveals a mysterious flat person wearing a lime green jacket and a scarf. They don't move or talk or do anything since they're either just a bizarre low res placeholder texture or a secret Easter egg representing one of the developers, but either way, just look at it. Nobody at Capcom has stepped forward to confirm who this person is, so your guess is as good as ours, but in a game packed with murderous villagers, bio-mutated monsters, and a potato sack-headed chainsaw guy, Secret Scarf Man might be the creepiest of them all. Resident Evil isn't the only Capcom franchise where stoic but campy protagonists fight hordes of the undead across once peaceful settings. There's also Dead Rising, which basically asks, what if Resident Evil, but open world, and infinitely sillier? So it's not too surprising that the two franchises have actually referenced each other. For starters, Keniston Express, a frame and photo development store in Dead Rising's Willamette Parkview Mall, makes an appearance in Resident Evil 5's opening village area. Like everything else in this village, the signage looks a little rough around the edges, but it's cool to think that the locals here appreciate the fine art of photography photography. Speaking of photographers, Dead Rising's photojournalist Hero Frank has his name appear, along with his enemy-turned-partner Isabella, in an in-game file found in Resident Evil 5 that lists them both as deceased. Damn, Resident Evil did them dirty. Really though, Resident Evil was just returning the favor because three years earlier, Dead Rising made fun of one of Resident Evil's most iconic and just wonderfully bad voiceover lines with a mid-mall eatery referencing the Jill Sandwich. After the bloated and meandering Resident Evil 6 launched in 2012, the Resident Evil franchise seemed completely at odds with itself. It had gone from a claustrophobic and languorous survival horror franchise to a mishmash and overextended action romp, splitting the fan base and leaving many wondering how the series would move forward. 2017's Resident Evil 7 recalibrated the story, rooting it in exploration and survival through intimate, derelict environments rife with obtuse puzzles and deliberately cautious pacing that the original game so expertly nailed. Capcom stated that the vintage horror movie franchise Evil Dead, the 1981 
one Sam Raimi film where Bruce Campbell visits a remote cabin in the woods filled with undead horrors was a huge inspiration for Resident Evil 7's creation and overall direction. Capcom returned the favor by adding several nods to the cult classic film all around Resident Evil 7, including giving the game's protagonist, Ethan Winters, an ugly yolk colored Oldsmobile similar to the one Ash drove in The Evil Dead. Additionally, one of the game's villains, Jack, repeatedly says Ash's catchphrase, Groovy, during a boss fight with Ethan. <laughs> oh, and Ethan spends much of the game attempting to rescue his wife named Mia, the same name as the main character in the 2013 female-led reboot movie, Evil Dead, which is awesome and violent and bloody, and you should watch it. You don't have to keep that part, I just wanted to say that. And those are just a few things you probably didn't know about Resident Evil. So what's your favorite Resident Evil secret? For example, did you know that the Resident Evil title screen voice guy just talks like that all day, everywhere he goes, to everyone? That's actually not true, I made that up. That'd be really weird and like uh, scary. Very scary and weird. Anyway, talk about Resident Evil in the comments below. It's an awesome video game franchise. It just turned 25, so here's to 25 more years. Then it'll be 50 years old, which will make it the same age as Resident Evil 4 Salazar, unless he's 10. I can't really tell. He's like an old child man. I, I don't get it either. Anyway, thanks for watching. Go celebrate Resident Evil.